Hello, everybody. Many thanks for joining this webinar today. My name is Tim Maurer, and I'm the co-chair of the Civil Society Participation Advisory Board of the Global Conference on Cyberspace, which will take place in The Hague next month. You're not able to see me right now. Instead, you're actually seeing Vladimir Radunovich from the Diplo Foundation, who is the leader for the webinar today, and who I will be introducing shortly after providing you with a few background information about this webinar series in general. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, the goal of this webinar series is to provide an overview of the different dimensions of cybersecurity to deepen civil society's understanding and familiarity with the various issues related to cybersecurity at the international level. The series cannot cover everything, but tries to be as comprehensive as possible. Today is the sixth webinar in this series, which consists of a total of seven webinars, and you will be able to find recordings of the previous webinars on the conference website that you can find in the chat window with the URL. So you can uh, go there later on to see the other recordings and some more background material. The individual webinar session is designed to give participants a more detailed overview of a specific cybersecurity issue. Today's topic is capacity building. Each webinar starts with a 30 to 40 minute presentation by the webinar leader, followed by a Q&A. So please feel free to ask questions at any time during this webinar, which will be collected and which I will read out loud after the presentation for Vlado to answer. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and that while I will not read out your name when you ask a question, I will read out your question aloud, which will be recorded, so please be mindful of that. At the end of the webinar, a pop-up window will, ask, will take you to a quick evaluation survey, and we would appreciate if you would take five minutes at the end of the webinar to fill out those questions, which will help us improve the webinars and which will help us um, improve this also moving forward for future webinar sessions. So before we get started on the specific topic, um, one of the general issues that comes up by talking about cybersecurity is what framing of cybersecurity and what definition are we working with? This webinar series is based on the definition that was developed by the Freedom Online Coalition's Cybersecurity Working Group in Internet Free and Secure. And this working group last year developed a definition which first starts with a preamble stating, international human rights law and international humanitarian law apply online as well as offline. Cybersecurity must protect technological innovation and the exercise of human rights. The definition of cybersecurity developed by this working group is as follows. Cybersecurity is the preservation through policy, technology, and education of the availability, confidentiality, and integrity of information and its underlying infrastructure so as to preserve the security of persons both online and offline. This definition is based on the ISO 27000 standard and was amended to also reflect the specific focus on the protection and security of persons. The overall agenda and order of the webinars is following the is mirroring the agenda of the Global Conference on Cyberspace, and you can go to the website to see more information about the conference as well as the webinar series structure. Now, with that, it's a great pleasure for me to introduce you all to Vladimir Brandunovich, who is the coordinator of e-diplomacy and cybersecurity educational and training programs of the Diplo Foundation. And I strongly encourage you to check out the great work that the Diplo Foundation is doing um, on their website, www.diplomacy.edu. And um, Blada is going to give us the presentation today focusing on cyber uh, capacity building. And I would also like to thank Taylor Roberts uh, from Oxford University, who is working with Blada on this specific topic and who is helping us in the background with this webinar series today. So a shout out to him as well as to Aditi Gupta from Global Partners Digital, who's been really helpful with this. And with that, I now hand it over to Vlada and encourage you all to ask questions, and we'll jump back in after the presentations for the Q&A. With that, Vlada, the floor is yours. Thank you, Tim. Thank you for uh, the excellent uh, introduction, as always. And uh, welcome, everyone, for, for the sixth uh, webinar. Um, it's 
particularly, I mean, my pleasure is, is really great to see such a number of people. Usually when we talk about uh, international peace and security and cybercrime and digital rights, a lot of people are joining, but not many people actually um, join specific discussions on capacity building, even though everyone seems like understanding why this is needed. So we, we purposely wanted to bring uh, capacity building into, into this series of, of webinars uh, to try to focus on, um, uh, well, okay, maybe some specific aspects of, of, of capacity building and how it should look in order to be efficient, but also what civil society, not only, but what civil society should get out of, uh, of capacity building initiatives or in case civil society wants to, to um, introduce new uh, capacity building programs, what are the aspects we should look at? And lastly, maybe also how can we benefit from the hard conference? That's, that's also a very important um, point. Uh, as you can see on this starting slide, um, I basically thought of introducing the, the bottom line of, of uh, the capacity building, which is at least in the field we are dealing with, which is uh, largely the policy aspects and diplomacy aspects, international relations, um, which is trying to extract the context uh, out of all the discussions that we see uh, at the IGF, within the UN, in ICANN, Net Mundial, uh, now the, the GCCS, the Freedom Online Conference. There's so many events around the world. There is so much talk. If any one of you has had, had a chance to go through transcripts of these talks, you could see an amazing number of words. Uh, but basically, there is a context um, within all of them. And it's usually different, different contexts coming from different professional backgrounds, engineers, lawyers, economists, uh, diplomats and different contexts coming from different stakeholders as well. Um, civil society, governments, business, corporate sector, academia, even the regional uh, diversity of, of context. Uh, for instance, talking about cybersecurity in the, in the Eastern world, Russia, China, would probably be talking about information security rather than, um, than cybersecurity. And it has its own connotation, which I'm not going to go into now. We had other webinars, but we can get back to the questions. So. Um, Moving on, what we are going to cover in the next like 20 something minutes is firstly starting from what capacity building is or what, what, is, what, is, what is it and what is it not, probably. Um, then going into some main principles and guidelines, um, actually trying to outline what we should be looking for, uh, either when we are developing our own programs or when we are engaging with partners that develop and offer capacity building programs. What are the characteristics we should probably be looking for in order to be sure that uh, that the those would be efficient then into a bit of needs and challenges specific type of needs and challenges when it comes to cybersecurity capacity building and digital policies in general internet governance in general but uh, also uh, cybersecurity and then lastly uh, is is what is out there uh, what existing programs we can find about cybersecurity internet governance and uh, what can we expect or what can we get out of the, the hard conference when it comes to capacity building um, and possible follow-ups for, for all of us. Um, so going into uh, diving into, into the agenda, the first question is what is capacity building? And uh, there are two views that you can uh, often hear at the meetings. Uh, one is, oh, not, not again talking about capacity building. No, I mean, it's an empty story. And the other one is, yes, yes, of course, capacity building, we need it, it's easy, it's a piece of cake to do. And, uh, and it's not actually such a piece of cake. But let's go with the first one. The first one is, no, stop talking about capacity building. Uh, if you were at the IGFs, Internet Governance Forums, or NetMundial, or I'm very sure if you go through the agenda even of the Hague Conference, I'm sh very sure that if, if you go through the, the speeches that we'll hear or discussions, we'll hear capacity building dozens of times. And uh, sometimes it, it, it already, uh, there's a feeling, at least for me, I don't know if you share the same feeling, that capacity building has become a kind of a bumper sticker. It's, it's kind of a buzzword. It's just put it there. We need to talk. We need to mention capacity building at least once. Uh, but if you follow on, um, on the actual support to capacity building programs, and I'm not talking only about financial support. I'm talking about actually uh, developing programs which have an effect and which are comprehensive. You, you won't find such a support. You'll find quite a number of programs which are excellent. But the support, mostly from those that are mentioning capacity building, and I include governments and corporate sector in that, 
uh, is is commonly lacking. So we we need to go beyond rhetorics. So uh, yes, we need to talk about capacity building more, but we need to move beyond beyond talking. That's the first uh, the first part of this um, of this discussion. So the second part uh, is yes, it's easy. It's a piece of cake. It's not really a piece of cake. Uh, what we usually mix up talking about capacity building is we can do a training, and that's more or less it. You just need to train people to understand what, what cybersecurity is or different aspects. So we just organize the training, we gather people, and that's it. Actually, what capacity building is about is a process. It's not a one-off event. It's a process. And there are certain things that, that we expect to produce uh, or, or bring with capacity building program. First one is learning. That means understanding the context, understanding the, the definitions, understanding the relations of definitions, learning. It is often a set of lectures, um, training, and, and kind of activities. The second one, or it doesn't have to go this order, uh, but the second one here is research. So we want to have people that will come out of the capacity building program which are able and motivated to do research. Uh, in order to build up on the knowledge that they, initial knowledge they acquired. So that's that's second component. The third one is that we want to see them make links. So not just copy paste the solutions. Let's have an, uh, an example of uh, building up a cert. Uh, we can hear that country A has built a cert and we just go there and, and copy paste the solution because we've heard about it. But we don't know, we don't understand the different roles of different players. We didn't sense the local dynamics within the, within the ministries or between the ministries, the civil society or corporate sector in, in, a, in a state. And we might actually uh, make quite, quite a trouble if we just copy paste. So making a link, uh, but then adapting it, making different links, but then adapting, connecting the dots basically, is a specific skill we want to develop within capacity building. Think, uh, and that's that's, Often a trouble, you know, uh, with so many developments, especially in cybersecurity, you have an incident and, uh, and the media would immediately approach you or someone knowing that you deal with cybersecurity and would just put a microphone on and say, uh, so what do you think about the incident that happened like half an hour ago? There was the, the case of Sony attacks when I got approached by a couple of people, media also asking, so what do you think about this morning news about uh, attack on, on Sony? And I was, my response in that case is usually, uh, you ask me to, what do I think? And thinking is a process which requires time. So, I mean, I can't give you a, a response immediately. Same thing when it comes to capacity building. We need time to process what we've learned, to process the links we made, and to actually think and build up own opinion about uh, what is the role of civil society in, in, um, in cybersecurity. Uh, what is, uh, is, is um, cyber armament something that is actually a solution or not? There are different components. Uh, should we discard the whole discussion about cybersecurity as, as a kind of a national security concept or we can probably adopt it? So it's building up on opinion. The last benefit that we want to see is engaging. So we want to have people that, we, that went to the capacity building program actually engaged in developments, in policy discussions, in negotiations, if you wish, whatever it is. But in order to have them engaged and in order to have them uh, actively participating in, in any event, the hard conference, for instance, they need to have had time to go through all these phases and in a way build up their own opinion and in a way get a courage to, uh, to, to stand up and say, I think this and actually fight for that argument. So comprehensive approach to capacity building is, is important to have in mind. It goes way beyond the simple training. Um, should the questions at any point, we'll probably get back to them at the end, but just shoot them as, as, the, as you have the questions or comments on all of this. Now, what are we looking for? So what should, I wouldn't say the ideal capacity building program look like, but what are the components that we probably want to have when it comes to cybersecurity? Now, I'm, I have a caveat here. I, I do have a specific angle because I work with the capacity building institutions. So uh, I'm, I'm a little bit biased uh, in, in bringing what I think, what I believe is the main component. Uh, but then again, I'm, I, I encourage you to bring more because I think building up layers of what we actually need uh, is, is something that's quite precious from even this series of webinars and the pre-event uh, in HAC. So what, what I think we should be looking for, whether we want to build up um, capacity building program on our own, develop a new one for the purpose of our institution or the stakeholders we work with, 
uh, or whether we want to engage with a partner who is offering a cybersecurity pro or, or capacity building program or any, any such. Those will be the phases, especially when it comes to development, that we should have in mind. So especially when it comes to development of the new capacity building program. You will you'll notice, those of you that, that work in, in management or project management, you recognize a lot of things which are similar to project management uh, because it is a project. It is a comprehensive project. Uh, assessing existing capacities, so what capacities we already have and what needs the particular target group we are targeting has. Uh, change readiness. Now, this is something really, really important, uh, especially when we work with governments, but let's be honest, it's also something that at least my experience says it's quite a challenge with civil society as well, the corporate sector as well. There's a specific mindset of uh, these specific communities which is not always easy to change. Uh, perceptions, we've been talking about that during the International Peace and Security webinar. So change readiness uh, is, is an important factor. And there is also mapping and influencing stakeholders or groups within stakeholders which can help us introduce this change readiness. Uh, or, or the change, simply the introduce the change, the ability to change. Um, formulating goals, of course, what we want, what we expect and objectives, design. We'll get back to that a little bit later on, on different aspects of design. Measuring the outcomes, uh, which can be particularly tricky when it comes to capacity building because it's a long process and the results are sometimes uh, also on a long-term scale. I'll get back to that later and developing a monitoring and evaluation segments in a way. So basically that's something that, as I said, you can see in most of the project managements, but it's quite useful to have in mind, especially when developing on capacity building program in cybersecurity as well. Now, particularly when we focus on cybersecurity, what are the dimensions we want to have in mind to try to cover, again, whether we are building our own program or whether we are engaging with, with uh, partners that have their programs. Uh, I, I thought of firstly putting a three dimension, which is a blue line, but then actually it's much more than three dimension. Mathematicians or engineers among you would probably understand the, these terms of n dimensional uh, uh, space. But I, I just tried to dis uh, somehow show it with these parallel lines. As, as alternative uh, additional layers. So the main ones would be what, how, and to whom. Uh, what basically is the topic? What is the topic we want to cover? And you, you could see even this series of webinars was constructed based on a number of specific topics. We can't cover everything, but we need to see what our specific target groups wants, desires to have. And so it can be a broad cybersecurity aspect, uh, what is cybersecurity, what is information security, what's the difference, data, data security, and so on, network security, all these nuances, what are the components and so on. Internet governance, of course, is a, is a broad um, view of cybersecurity or uh, links with the other areas. International peace and security, cybercrime, digital rights, strategy and policy, building up certs, developing national strategy and national framework. So those are just some, but you, to name the few, but feel free to add uh, into, into this scheme. A parallel kind of additional layer that we have to have in mind is also uh, what angle we are, we are, from what angle we are actually covering, let's say, the, the cybercrime. Uh, are we actually covering it from the, from the perspective of policy and strategy, or are we covering it from technology, so how it works, what are the main problems with uh, um, uh, outreaching of, or, or identifying the perpetrators and so on? Is it a law enforcement part? We had uh, two days ago an uh, excellent uh, cybercrime event in Geneva where there was actually a, a discussion between the activists and law enforcement agencies on data collection and data retention. And for one, uh, for law enforcement, uh, data retention, data protection, uh, data retention, data collection is something that's needed to some extent to, to be able to prosecute. But on the other hand, for activists, uh, there is a huge caveat on any sort of retention of, of data. So different angles. Um, there are probably other dimensions we should take into account. The second one is how. So how do we do it? Or let me first go to to whom. Maybe that was the first one I should have addressed. To whom actually we are um, in a way addressing with a, with a, with a capacity building program. So one major line is who is the target group, who is the stakeholder group 
when it comes to cybersecurity. Are we addressing the governments? And even then, it can be different whether we're addressing the Ministry of Telecommunication Information Society, the Ministry of Police, the Ministry of Defense. It's a different angle. Uh, are we addressing technical community? So that means usually the people dealing with IPv6 aspects, the DNS aspects, with it, even cert to some extent with the networks, network security. Uh, law enforcement agencies, uh, which have their quite practical focus on how they can actually use the evidences or come to have evidences and so on. Uh, corporate sector, which of course has uh, mostly, again, the practical level and a little bit of risk assessment um, view and uh, um, uh, insurance view and uh, organized inter internal policies and so on when it comes to cybersecurity. Activists, so digital rights, the, 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 this balance between data retention used for surveillance and used for uh, law enforcement and so on. A different layer of that is the, the level of, of those people that we involve in particular capacity building program or set of activities. Is it a high level one? Is it a coordination level? Is it an operation level? For the high level one, the high level persons, for instance, from the ministry, then even for the corporate sector, the activities, I mean, they have different, different uh, available time. So they can spend an hour or two. And the most you can do is an elevator challenge. You have five minutes or an hour to tell them everything they need to know. But you also have to tell them that actually they have trained people within their institutions, which can take over and dive more in depth. So you also train people on the level of coordination, managers, coordinators, uh, deputy ministers, or whatever it is, uh, in whatever institution is. And then the operation, operation level. Those people usually have the most time to go through the in-depth uh, understanding of cybersecurity. And those people are usually the policy drafters, if we are talking about policy making, uh, or pr practitioners. Uh, but then again, they need to know that high level management uh, and all the structures are aware of their knowledge and they're actually going to use them. And a high level needs to know that they actually have someone trained underneath them who A, understands the issue and B, can actually do something based on that. So this kind of linking throughout the structures and levels is important. Uh, as we usually call it, the phone, the red phone. So who do we call in specific country? Um, we call a minister or a contact point and who does the minister then call when he has a problem or she has a problem. The third dimension is how, um, and there is a set of things. I mentioned it's a comprehensive approach. So we have typical things like sessions, usually short ones, mostly in discussion format, especially for high level people. They don't want to be teached in, in, uh, like teaching and preaching. They want to be in a format of discussion where you actually bring some experts and they can express opinions, but in effect, they listen. Um, Training seminars, one, two, three day seminars, um, course, uh, courses and, and kind of things. Uh, webinars, so that's also a very useful thing to, to uh, bring expertise and knowledge, uh, which is short running like this. Uh, simulations, which might actually be a very practical exercises and so on. The second layer is also what approach? Should it be in situ? Should it be face to face? Should it be online? which has a lot of merits as well, but a lot of drawbacks. Should it be blended, both of these in specific phases? Then we have a duration. Should it last, that, that might be the, the red one. Uh, should it last for an hour for high level ones? Should it, be, should it last for uh, two or three days? Which means it's for um, um, usually those that can devote it, which is coordination level and so on. Or maybe it can be a month online course which is usually very convenient for the operational and practitioners that can devote and dive in depth into the, the, the case of cybersecurity. Uh, a specific angle on cybersecurity that we, that we simply have to have when it comes to formats, uh, and I mentioned it, uh, it's, um, it's not just the training. So the training, that's probably the middle one, is face-to-face -face training has a lot of merits, and it's also a networking part, and it's also uh, very live, devoted. Uh, the online aspect, the online courses, online and, um, debates, webinars, is that's the left one, is very val valuable because it can consume uh, specific slots of the time uh, of working or, or, or non-working time of professionals. Uh, in most of the cases, you can also do asynchronous training where the group is, is actually discussing something, but people use the time of the day whenever they feel comfortable to send feedbacks and comments and so on. Um, and then it has a, a, one benefit is also it actually st 
stores the discussion. So you can go back uh, through the discussions and, um, and uh, in a way, revisit and uh, remind yourself what, uh, um, what has been discussed. Uh, the third one is, of course, the high-level ones, the presentations, the um, kind of meetings for high-level people and so on. So that's just reminding that there are different formats that can be used. Um, so summarizing this part is what are we looking for? Usually we want, in all cases, we want, we want something that's effective, that actually has results uh, later on that we can see. In most cases, we want to have quick because the cybersecurity area is changing so fast that you don't have time to plan something for years. But you probably have to have uh, programs which are in a way set up and can be easily adjusted uh, and organized within a week, two, three, a month. Um, something like what we also did with, with these webinars, even, even though it took some time to come, come up to that. Low cost is what, unfortunately, more and more we have to focus on because there is fewer and fewer uh, funds for capacity building, even though there is a big uh, formal support to all of that. So in this sense, online uh, and e-tools can be very, uh, way, very good for cutting the cost and raising the efficiency. We want to see results, but sometimes we have big budget, so we can also question that. Uh, as results, we want to see localization, which means ta uh, adjusting the training to, to specific needs of the local audiences or whoever we are targeting. Inclusiveness, we want to see different stakeholders. And ownership, that's quite important. We want to see that people actually feel like they're members of, of, this, uh, of this whole progress, uh, process. They, they feel the ownership of the process. They feel like uh, even proud to be part of it and proud to be an alumni and connected into these people and into this group. And, um, and we actually want to see uh, something as implemented as an outcome on a longer term uh, of the capacity building program. So that's probably what we should be looking for. And the last part here is needs and challenges. So what are the specific needs and challenges when it comes to, uh, to, to uh, uh, capacity building in, in cybersecurity? Uh, we have discussed topics in the previous weeks. Uh, I think the next one, the last one, and Tim, you can correct me later if I'm wrong, is, is actually on the roles of the, of the civil society. But uh, in all these different aspects, uh, there are a couple of things we should have in mind or probably try to revisit from time to time when we think about capacity building. I already mentioned <clears throat> cybersecurity uh, needs, especially in this part of a policy and especially for civil society, uh, we need to bring in the holistic view. Now, uh, this is the, I, I've seen a lot of familiar faces uh, within the attendance, attendance today. So I guess for some of you, for most of you, this is a familiar uh, diplomacy illustration on building under construction as an internet governance. Someone asked me where, did, where we find all these illustrations, but it's basically we have the illustrator and the, the creative team which is doing uh, all this, so uh, they're, they're free to share, so share them if you need. Um, we need to have in mind when we talk about cybersecurity, both internal or, or subparts of cybersecurity, which is, as I said, cybercrime, um, um, strategic and policy aspects, uh, international peace and security, internet safety, child protection, digital rights. And then digital rights goes a little bit beyond cybersecurity only. It's kind of a link with other internet governance aspects like human rights, privacy, uh, data protection, um, even social cultural aspects, a lot of legal aspects like jurisdiction questions, uh, law enforcement questions, of course. So. The holistic view we simply need to have in, in mind when we build up anything about cybersecurity, and I think especially in this in this kind of a framework like the the Hague Conference and the Internet Governance Forum, we have to have a wide uh, wide views, and that that means that even if we are talking about the uh, training people to do a cybersecurity like the CERT, building up the CERT, the Computer Emergency Response Team in a, in a country, they should have at least some of them should have a bigger picture and know where the, the risks when it comes to data protection, when it comes to privacy, possibly, or even freedoms uh, to some extent. So they should have a broader, broader understanding. So holistic approach. Inclusion, I think we mentioned it already, uh, that we, we simply want to have as many different stakeholders included in capacity building program, not in all of them. Some programs, some training programs are, are actually focused on specific uh, target groups. And maybe we don't have to have it too 
too uh, diverse. But in most cases, in, in especially for what, what uh, civil society is doing, mostly focused on digital rights, we should try to have governments as well, if possible, corporate sector, uh, law enforcement. And this particular illustration comes from um, Internet Governance Forum in uh, Azerbaijan, where Diplo had the boot. Those that, that uh, know uh, Jovan, the director of Diplo, will recognize him on the, on the illustration. Uh, we had a, a, a boot with all these uh, IG uh, books and stuff. Uh, uh, materials and so on, and you, if you if you were there, you would know uh, that there was a lot of police policemen around, uh, walking, checking, security stuff, and so on. And the local police, really the local Azeri police, and at some point they they got interested into uh, one particular book which was in Russian, the Russian edition of Internet Governance uh, uh, book, and they started reading it, and they were actually very interested in in uh, in all these cyber issues. Now, those were really the cops over there. Uh, it's, it's absolutely possible that you can actually attract people which are not in the policy discussions uh, with, with cyber issues. And we should have that in mind. This inclusion doesn't go only among the stakeholders, but also within different layers and levels of, of uh, uh, involvement in, in each of the stakeholders. So inclusion is, is very important, including the cops. Uh, that, that are commonly around internet government discussion. Uh, walking the talk, I really like that one. I think it is important. Uh, it is actually, when we are talking about internet, let us use it. Let's use uh, the maximum of its, its benefits of the internet. It can be the online course, it can be the webinar, it can be a delivery of, of such, a, such a presentation or a speech, whatever. Uh, you see the, the illustration probably uh, of the guy who is holding the, the webinar is probably in his home environment. Um, I, I have to testify that I'm, I'm, I'm properly dressed, so I'm not uh, uh, this kind of person. But uh, you never know. I mean, you have relaxed atmosphere, which can actually be very good because you can um, bring in the experts uh, that, that, that are hard to, to get for any reason, for their time availability or for the funds reasons. We can actually get the global expertise by using the e-tools. Uh, secondly, you cut the costs because there is no travel. You cut the time of organizing things because, as you see, we can just set up the webinar uh, easily and, and organize it. Um, and uh, it also overcomes the national limits. Uh, most of the in-situ trainings are regional or national. When you do an online program, you actually can uh, get the global uh, experiences, the global groups of people, sharing knowledge together, and that's, that's an additional, additional benefit. So having walking the talk in mind. Uh, and lastly, the continuity. Uh, that means that um, it's not just enough to finish cybersecurity uh, cyber capacity building program or a training or whatever it is, a set of activities. You finished and you said, okay, now you just offload the participants and say you are on your own. You actually need to... Um, maintain these connections, uh, to try to, ch uh, to, to, to uh, cherish this, uh, 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 this network and uh, encourage to, to work further, keep them together, um, link them, follow who is doing what, try to engage them in discussions. Again, the e-tools can help on that because you have social networks, public ones, private ones, uh, uh, you have uh, Facebook if you wish, Facebook groups and stuff, uh, but you also, of course, use the events where you know that some of those folks from the community that you build uh, basically will, will, will join. And you, you try to make even a party or something like that. And I know it, it sounds silly, but social events and social uh, gatherings are either through the online space or, or in vivo are uh, um, a very precious moment of continuity of the capacity building program. And after all, that's the way to build up the multiplier effect. Um, so continuity. Interprofessional communication, we mentioned that uh, in the previous uh, webinar and probably in the other webinars as well, the extent to which communication between professions, diplomats and, and engineers, lawyers and, and uh, uh, economists, uh, is language is different, the mindset is different, the needs are different, um, the focus areas are different. Uh, Capacity building programs, which are inclusive, which bring more of, more, more of them together, can actually help bridge these gaps, bridge these silos. 
uh, because you, you simply encourage sharing different perspectives. So have it in mind as well. Uh, helping improving interprofessional communication is, is um, a great benefit to the processes in, in cybersecurity. Um, and a bit of on challenges, a couple of challenges that we have to have that we have to have in mind. One is missing. I don't know where is my illustration of funds, but it's not so uh, interesting anyhow. Uh, so the challenges, funds, we mentioned that. Um, there are ever-shrinking finances for anything, and including for capacity building, even though we all think about it. But that means that we need to um, try to influence the stakeholders and possible funders, whether that's government, whether that's donors, whether that's corporate sector, to actually move from uh, rhetorics to, to implementation, to assisting uh, capacity building programs, lobbying for support for capacity building programs, and so on. Measurement, I mentioned it's very hard because the product of capacity building uh, is, is people. You have a, a bunch of uh, people which are now capable and uh, to understand, link, and engage in cybersecurity processes or cybersecurity and human rights processes. But by the time you will actually see the results of someone like that uh, being in uh, engaged, it's usually three, four years, five years time. I know, it, for instance, from Diplo community, and I know that some of you are also uh, part of Diplo community, it takes about two, three, four years to see some of the people from our community actually now being in MAG, being in Icon GAC, being in the Net Mundial. So it takes time, and you can't justify it year by year, justify the funds, the efforts, and so on. So you, you have to have it in mind even when you're negotiating or building up the program. Um, limitations, human limitations, simple human limitations, uh, when we want to do more and more and more. 24 hours per day, you can't break that limitation. Uh, we just have that time. And we use it for family, for, for, for uh, work, for learning, for all these things, for sleep, for eating. So that's, 20, that's a limitation. Second one is uh, eight pieces of information in the processing memory, working memory of every one of us. That's the limit. We can't have more than eight pieces of information at the same time. It's just if we are overloaded, we're not going to get any, any of the new knowledge. Uh, 148 stable social connections, that's a number number, uh, 148 social connections that we can actually functionally maintain, uh, links with other people. So those are also the limits. We have to have them in mind when we push for more and more. So there are limits. And lastly, Challenge uh, when it comes to change readiness. We mentioned that. I mean, it's, it's hard, especially in government in institutions, in official, in bureaucratic institutions, in diplomacy. It takes a lot of time, but uh, but um, be aware that it's very troublesome. Also, in in parts of civil society, to change the mindset, it's maybe the easiest way to do in corporate sector. But the corporate sector then has its own interests, which are very particular. So that also gives a challenge. Uh, that would be about, ah, here is the funds, it appeared finally, okay, good. Um, and then lastly, the next steps, and I'm stopping there and opening uh, the floor to you. Um, what are the next steps? So basically, there is a lot of capacity building, not a lot, but there is quite some, quite a number of capacity building programs related to cybersecurity. I don't know if anyone actually made mapping of of opportunities, and I think that's something we can do, and I think that's something civil society can do. Um, I know that within the Internet Governance Forum, the uh, working group within the MAG, but it was open to anyone else, and we had a lot of people there, uh, started mapping, uh, or at least linking, connecting everyone who, who are doing capacity building in Internet Governance, and started mapping the institutions, uh, organizations that are doing capacity building work, and who is doing what, in what way, what are the, the, the focus areas, uh, who are the target groups and so on. Uh, we might try to do similar mapping of capacity building uh, opportunities in cybersecurity area. Uh, so, so that's an encouragement to do. But actually, you can look for and, and already take some, some of the, the excellent um, programs around the world. Um, I think that's precious because building up new initiatives, yeah, unless if there is something that already exists, is costs a lot of money, takes a lot of time, uh, needs a lot of efforts. And sometimes it's better to adjust what you actually already already have somewhere around the world. Um, specifically, when we talk about the HUG conference, uh, as you see, a lot has been put in uh, 
um, in, in a lot of efforts in capacity building, at least in this kind of two phases, the webinar series and then the training in C2. And I hope, I'm sure, that there will be a follow-up of that. Um, that will be a, the right way to go, to simply go on with, with, uh, with this process. Uh, there is a, a plan of the, uh, and it's, it's not a secret, of course, of the Dutch government to push for a global forum on cyber expertise. It's even in the agenda, which is, to my knowledge, uh, aiming to gather a government's corporate sector, I don't know about civil society now at, mo at the moment, uh, that can support capacity building uh, work when it comes to cybersecurity and other uh, areas. Um, around the world and uh, link them with uh, institutions, organizations around the world that actually need uh, capacity building or those that can offer expertise or those that can offer funds and so on. Uh, so that's something we should be watching. We should be trying to be engaged somehow. We should be working with, uh, with the, probably the Dutch government as well to, uh, to see how civil society can benefit and influence the whole process, be involved in it, follow it. Um, and, uh, and I think I will stop there. I think it was enough. It was, again, uh, over the time that I was supposed to speak. So next time, Tim, please uh, cut me off. Just uh, mute me uh, when, I, when I go over time. I'll stop here. I'll just put a little bit of fun in front of you uh, while we are opening for, for, uh, for, for the floor. Thanks, Tim. Over to you. Thank you, Flada. Um, this was really excellent. Um, and I've been collecting questions that participants have submitted. And let me first point out that for those of you who are particularly interested in this aspect of the conference, um, Vlad already mentioned the Global Forum on Cyber Expertise, which is currently scheduled to be announced on the first day of the conference on Thursday at 6 p.m. So for those of you who are interested to learn more about what um, the, this Global Forum will be focused on specifically, I encourage all of you to attend that specific section session on Thursday at 6 p.m. at the conference. Um, first, the first question uh, was a clarifying question, Vlad. You had mentioned the book when you were talking about the inclusion and walking the talk. Um, what book was that, was that specifically that you referenced? Which book did I reference? If the person who asked that question could uh, clarify where specifically Vlada, um, which reference he made, let me know. Um, and then I'll get back to you, Vlad. Yeah, on that. We'll, we'll follow uh, up on that. Yeah, I'm just not sure which one we have in mind. Yeah, okay. You can also send Vlad an email, actually, if you have a specific sure. question about that session afterwards. So the next question is, in the real world, the comprehensive model for capacity building with a different target in one entity is almost impossible. We need to choose. From your experience, what is the most common strategy to select the target of capacity building? Uh, a clarification on that, when I was talking about um, comprehensive capacity building, I was uh, mostly referring to the way we do it, rather than um, to, to the didactics, to the methodology, rather than target group. I don't think that you can actually do capacity building for everyone. I mean, if anyone can do for everyone, no. You have to choose a specific target group and a specific angle even. So in that sense, um, I think if we go back to the, to the um, uh, three-dimensional space or six-dimensional space, whatever, we need to find a dot in this space where we actually focus. Who, uh, what topic, what level, um, uh, to whom it, it addresses, how we do it. So we need to kind of narrow down uh, these, these elements. But when it comes to the methodology and the approach, the, the uh, underlying point of the comprehensive capacity building means that you don't just do a simple one activity. You don't do a training. You don't do a, a webinar. You do a set of linked activities with thinking about how you link, how you get them more uh, into, the, uh, into the topic, into the process, while having in mind, let me see if I can find, the, 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 I think it was a, a comprehensive approach, while having in mind the results that we want to have. That we want to have people that actually learn, research, make links, uh, build their own opinion, and get engaged. So that's, that's what I had in mind. So that means not just a training, not just a webinar, but a set of activities that are linked, and even after that, maintaining this community of people. But this community of people can be a very particular one. It can be a small group of law enforcement uh, with some involvement of experts, not even necessarily um, multi-stakeholder. It would be good to have someone from academia and someone from civil society and government to bring in different dimensions. 
but not necessarily that the group has to be mixed. The point of comprehensive approach is rather it needs time and it needs to, it's, it's kind of a long process. It's a process. It's not just an event. That, that was rather it. I hope it, um, it reflects what, what you had in mind. Yes, um, and you actually answered another question that was just submitted. So the next question is, um, in such a delicate and complex situation regarding cybersecurity where there's no framework for dialogue between the various actors, what strategy should we follow? I suppose the question is more on, on, um, on how do we establish a dialogue, right? Um, well, I, since we are discussing capacity building now, I would maybe focus on how we can, whether we can do it through, through capacity building. And my personal opinion, my personal experience, is that uh, a well thought capacity building program uh, that brings, well targeted of course, and specifically targeted people from different stakeholders, um, can actually contribute to that. Uh, those of you that are members or, or following the Diplo's online community, which is, by the way, not open only for alumni, anyone can, can join. I can send you the link later on. You'll see about 1,500 people from all, all over the world which are discussing different issues and being from various institutions and stakeholders. Most of them went through capacity building program. So it opens the door for better communication, for the exchange of opinions. At the same time, of course, you have to have the physical, physical, the political venues uh, and frameworks where you can actually discuss. The hard conference is one of them. The IGF is another one. Uh, it doesn't go up to the level of decision making because if we go to the processes which are actually, at the moment, decision making, um, which is the UN General Assembly, uh, which is even okay, the governmental group of experts is not, but uh, but it brings some recommendations, but it's quite close. Uh, the ITU is, to some extent, transparent, but it's not always multi-stakeholder when it brings decisions. So decision-making is not so open. It, it doesn't open that much opportunities for dialogue yet. But there are other fora which open opportunities for, for multi-stakeholder dialogue on cybersecurity, at least for policy shaping. The effect on decision-making is, is something we can discuss. But I believe that, that a specific program, capacity building programs can contribute to that because they, that's my experience. Simply, it allows a relaxed exchange of opinions, non-formal even. You have people from governments which are in the program which are not on behalf of the institution or are, but not formally there. So they can express their opinions. They can reflect. They can discuss. And that, that helps the dialogue, definitely. Great. Thanks, Vlada. The next question is, what role does academic and scholarly research on theories of capacity building currently play in Deep Blue Foundation's work? What academic disciplines are contributing the most useful research? Is it, for example, political science or development studies? Uh, when it, I wouldn't focus too much on Deep Blue because this is a GCCS uh, webinar, but uh, very briefly, the way we have it, since we've been dealing, developing it for like 20 years in diplomacy and some 15 years in internet governance, uh, it's actually the, the academic uh, background on the education, um, uh, capacity building and education specifically. Uh, and then our focus, most of our work is on diplomacy, international relations. Uh, but, but the whole concept of capacity building is built on educational background. So the way, the methodologies, the didactics, curricula development and these kind of things, which uh, not everyone that develops capacity building has to know. I mean, there are a lot of uh, open, guidelines is in the, and then kind of uh, tips and tricks how to, to do a, a, a very good uh, capacity building program. So you don't have to be a, an expert in that knowledge, but you should probably have someone with you who can help you with this didacticus and, and methodology, even online. Technology is not an issue. You have readily made WebEx, um, uh, MOOCs run on open source platforms. Uh, and So you have platforms, you have technology. Didactics, methodology is something that and materials, of course, and content is something that that is that is the key for for capacity. But then, sorry, Tim. But then, if there are any more questions about Diplo specifically, I'm ready to to respond. Uh, just follow follow up with email uh, so that we don't uh, capture the time. So 
Sounds good. Yeah, uh, I would also suggest that um, if you have any questions specific to Diplo's work, you can always feel free to email Vlada afterward um, using the contact details of the presentation and also in the in the chat window. The next question is, what types of monitoring and evaluation work is being done on internet governance related capacity building? Um, I dare say none. <laughs> I dare say none. Uh, we don't even know who's doing what. So individually, I would now this is my really my personal opinion. Um, individual or institutionally, institutions that that do the work on capacity building, uh, and that uh, that's also the Oxford uh, Center, that's also the Summit School on Internet Governance, the uh, the ISOC work of Diplo and many others. Uh, I'm sure they have their internal monitoring, but on a global level or on a more comprehensive level, we haven't yet done even the mapping of who's doing what and let alone the effects. And as I said, it's, it's a little bit tricky to do, uh, it's quite tricky to do a evaluation of, of, uh, uh, of the results or the effects of capacity building on, a long, on the short term. So you actually need to be working on that for longer term in order to, or, or uh, take the model, which is maybe, which is maybe shown to be approved, uh, proven to be uh, successful, that only in a few years you can actually see where these people that you've trained uh, have gone, what, what they have done. Uh, how influential they are, uh, and so on. You can actually see the results in only three, four years. But there are other other possibilities to evaluate. I don't think there is any global mechanism now. There is no coordination beyond very voluntary coordination of these institutions that work together. And I think that's something we should be working on, and maybe the Hague Conference can be a, a place to start, or the IGF can be the place to to, to push that forward. The next question is, how can organizations dealing with cybersecurity come together and contribute to threat awareness and safety essential trainings to help global citizens? This relates to a point that was made by another participant who pointed out that in the, uh, for most of the NGOs in the region of the participant, there was actually a lack of awareness about the issue of cybersecurity and that that had to start before you could really think about capacity building. Um, so I'd be interested to hear your view on how can organizations dealing with cybersecurity come together and contribute to threat and awareness and safety essentials? Uh, they could. It's, it's, I think it's a matter of will, uh, and it's a matter of um, using the, the, the opportunities we have. Uh, as I mentioned, the hard conference, the Freedom Online conference, the Internet Governance Forum, especially because that's the place where most of the people join, also those dealing with cybersecurity. Uh, so, um, and uh, it's not just the civil society that lacks the awareness. It's uh, civil society is, is quite aware of the, or to a large extent, aware of uh, uh, digital rights aspect of this de debate, but not that much on the um, on the international peace and security and cyber crime and so on. Uh, at the same time, you have um, governments which are not much uh, into data protection, into uh, human rights. I mean, digital rights and so on. So there is a don't think that it's just civil society. It's all the stakeholders lack certain components. How do we go ahead with that? Um, I don't know. I guess. Uh, well, let's see. I mean, I, I, I personally, I will try to follow up with that uh, with the uh, Internet Governance Forum capacity building group and see if we can map finally please those working in Internet Governance area. Area. I hope that maybe the the, the global forum on cyber expertise could do exactly that. I think that that was the idea. Maybe team, you know more. Uh, to try to gather institutions that care about cybersecurity, whether they do uh, capacity building or not, supposedly both those that can support and those that deliver uh, capacity development, and uh, and get them together. I hope that that can be one of the outcomes of the uh, global forum on cyber expertise. But let's work for that uh, before the hug and in the hug. Maybe we can follow up with all of you that are interested and see how we can how we can influence that. Thanks, Vlad. Um, we have only four minutes left. So one question was, uh, I will read one question that pertains to capacity building and the conference. Um, and then we can take three more questions in one go for you to answer, Vlad, and then we will end um, at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Um, so one question was, um, wondering if there's, if there are any specific upcoming capacity building programs organized by um, global partners um, or any other NGO 
So um, right now with the capacity building program that's in place is this webinar series specifically for the conference and cybersecurity and human rights. Um, and uh, I expect that beyond the conference, there will be future uh, civil society capacity building and training programs. Um, so keep an eye out for who is announcing that and what NGO specifically. Uh, but I imagine that there will be more on this uh, moving forward um, and something to be discussed at the conference. Uh, with that, I say we have uh, three more questions for Vlada for the last three minutes. Um, and the ones that I've collected relating is, um, one, how do we shift the paradigm of national governments contracting international bodies um, and international organizations and these parties working exclusively with each other? What about the role of small and medium priced enterprises and how do we get a more inclusive approach? Um, that's question number one. The sec second question is, has a skills ma matrix been developed related to capacity building that works off the, the graphic that you used earlier, so one specific for, for skills? Um, and I think that's it. So those two questions are can the you Tim, Can you repeat the second one? The question is, has a skills matrix been developed related to capacity building work using a similar graphic as the one that you presented, the 3D axis? Ah, okay, thanks. Um, yeah, the, the, a brief comment on, on the, on the, on the um, minus one question, which was a comment on uh, what are the upcoming uh, uh, capacity building opportunities, that's exactly the problem that we don't know. Uh, we don't have any mechanism, uh, even civil society hasn't, hasn't worked on that really, to, to get together and, and try to uh, aggregate who's doing what and offer at one place, one-stop shop, so that people simply can go and see who's doing what. So we don't know what's actually coming, and that's something we really need to work on. Uh, but, but we are trying to find different venues where we can actually sit down and say, okay, let's, let's try to aggregate and then offer what, what's happening. Uh, second question, or the first question was, <clears throat> was um, I guess uh, again for a Nobel Prize. Um, I, I I don't know. I mean uh, that is a big problem. Um, this kind of a silos uh, exists in cybersecurity when it comes to cooperation and opening up. Um, I suppose, or I hope that the process is like uh, and communication within the process, like the the Hug uh, conference and the IGF can help opening up these silos and this kind of uh, closed communications and corporations. Uh, but I, I don't have an answer. To be honest, I don't have an answer. I throw it back to you, all of you, and, and see how we, how we uh, if we can, what is the role of civil society in that. And the second one, when it comes to matrix, uh, there are matrix uh, developed for, the, for capacity building in general. Uh, for cybersecurity, I'm not aware of any. So we're particularly adopting some of the knowledge about capacity building methodologies and uh, and education uh, in in specific areas, for instance, what we do in, in uh, diplomacy. But I'm not aware if there is any uh, particular new kind of formal formal matrix research or uh, or a suggestion on. Uh, uh, maybe even I think uh, I think that uh, Oxford Center has been working on that. The Taylor may maybe follow up on that, uh, but I'm not sure. So. Um, that's something worth exploring, definitely. Yeah. Uh, this is a new area, and uh, and uh, those are things that we need to help working out on. Thank you very much, Lada. This was a great way to end this webinar focused on capacity building. Thank you all for your questions and for your participation. The recording of this webinar will be posted on the website in the next few days, as well as a short two to three page summary. We look forward to hopefully seeing many of you in The Hague next month and for you joining us um, at the next webinar, which will focus on privacy and the date for that and the link to register is on the Global Conference on Cyberspace website. Um, with that, thanks again to you, Vlada, and to you, Taylor, for all your help with this. And I wish you all a very nice day. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Aditi. Thank you all for coming. Bye.